Yeah, I didn't. Already? Yep. <laughs> Call this meeting to order and we will start with the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Scott. Here. 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 Uh, we've heard from Mr. Sinkowitz. He is out of the state. Do I hear a motion to excuse? So moved. Second. Motion Duff. Second Malik. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, correspondence. <coughs> we have one previously received letter on the park hearing. Um, one additional email that came in after we got the packets on um, also on the park, uh, which I'll read here, uh, we'll not be able to, it's from Barbara Cook, uh, 2512 Woodlawn Street. Hello, I will not be able to attend this meeting, but since I live at 2512 Woodlawn and my driveway is on Waikito, I have a couple of concerns. I hope Waikato, Waikito will still be maintained for dust control and snow removal. And I am also concerned about visitors to tennis courts parking on my lawn since the road will be closed at my back property line. Uh, thank you, Barbara Cook, 2512 Woodlawn Street. Uh, do I hear a motion to receive and file the correspondence? So moved. Second. Uh, further discussion? Um, actually, we have a friendly amendment to file a copy of those with the record of the public hearing. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, <coughs> additions to business. Uh, do we have any additions? I believe we want to add a veterans memorial item. Is that still? Correct. Would, would you like us to add a topic tonight? Do we have an update from the Veterans Memorial Committee? Would you like that to be added? We didn't have a quorum at tonight's meeting, okay. so we don't have a recommendation. Okay. Tonight. okay. Well, then let's not add one. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll move to the first call to the public, an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items. Before I open that up, um, I do want to mention we're going to have a public hearing on the fiscal year 19 budget and the Clara Miller Park master, master uh, plan draft. So if you want to speak on either one of those items, the place to do that is really when we open the public hearing for those and then that gets all those comments together in one spot. So with that, uh, I open the first call to the public. Seeing none, I will close the, oh, sorry, yes. Oh, let's get you a microphone. So that folks can hear. And name and address. My name is Dwayne Patnot. I live at uh, 2570 Rose Lawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm here. To, uh, you say you're going to put that bike trail 10 feet away from my property line and put some more trees where I can't even look out my uh, windows from my house like I've been doing for the last 30 years and see all the wildlife that's up and down that road. And then you're going to put it closer to my house, and you got these snowmobiles and these um, golf carts. Um, a lot of them go, I, I guess, I suppose are closed from daylight to some sunset. They're out there, um, not uh, only the snowmobiles out there late at night flying up down through there. You know, that's going to keep me up at night. And plus uh, the golf course, and now. Uh, I seen one at the bar. Are you going to allow to even have one beer and then go on these tracks with it? And you're going to also put that where it goes into that jogging track where um, they're going to be going up around th all the way around that. And you can walk through there without any bikes bothering you and all that. But you're going to put that jogging trail, all that stuff can go in there. And that's going to be like a racetrack, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> because you're going to put a lot of exercise pro, uh, stuff in there, which that's fine. That should have been in there in the first place, set it all out there on that street. But you, you should keep that for the elderly people and people with um, uh, newborns and that. They can walk through there with the shade and don't have to worry about somebody on the bike or any more electrical vehicle. Okay. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Anybody else during the first call to the public? Mr. Renwick. 
Dave Renwick, 685 Lamenia. Uh, I read in the spinal column, they had a little article on this upcoming public hearing for the parks and the budget. And I read that you said that uh, you had discussed the uh, trash fee. And so help me, I've gone through the minutes and I can't find any discussion of the trash fee in there. So I think that might have been a little bit of false information put out because the trash fee is something that should be discussed and discussed at length because that's what's pretty much this tax and spend thing that you've got with the trash, trash fee is what's making this parts <coughs> thing possible and what made the weed harvester possible. So I think that was misleading at best, according to your minutes, to have that in the newspaper. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the first call to the public? Seeing none, I will close the first call. We will move on to approval of consent agenda. Um, I did want to mention to everybody on council, we did get a couple of updates on the budget amendments which are currently mm -hmm. on the consent agenda. We can either leave it on consent if you've had a chance to look at it or we can pull it off and talk about it. Does anybody want it pulled from consent? Okay. Uh, with that then, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Uh, <laughs> question Dave, second Duff. Uh, further discussion? We get a roll call vote on that. <coughs> yes. 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 And it occurs to me, I don't believe when we talked about additions to business, we didn't have an addition to business, but we did not approve the agenda yet. So do I hear a motion to approve the overall agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion to vote. Second. Duff. Uh, further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, <clears throat> that brings us to item 11. Uh, first public hearing tonight is on the fiscal year 19 budget. Do I hear a motion? Well, actually, before I, before I open the public hearing, let me ask our treasurer if he has any additional information he would like to present. Uh, Mr. President, not really. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the budget that was adopted, there are just a very few uh, limited number of changes, and uh, I, I laid those out for you, and, um, you know, nothing since we last met or last discussed the matter has, has come to light of any grave importance. Okay. Uh, so with that, let me open the, let me ask for a motion to open the public hearing for the fiscal so year 19. Okay. I heard a uh, motion, Malik, okay. second Duff, uh, for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, this is the public hearing for the fiscal year 19 budget. If you have comments, please either come up to the microphone or we'll get a microphone to you so they can get a recording. Mr. Rupp. Dave Renwick, 685 Amenia. Uh, the trash fee is just playing a cash cow for you guys. You all know it. You're all aware of it. Uh, it's been making money hand over fist <coughs> pretty much since it was instituted. And you didn't have a use for that money. Now, oh, well, we're going to do the park. We're going to do this. We're going to do pocket parks. We're going to do, oh, we did the weed harvester. The, the way government is supposed to work is you're supposed to let us know what you want to do and then collect the money for it, not the other way around. You're not supposed to bank. I, I'm sorry, the, the general fund is an embarrassment. I sent it to a friend of mine who's a municipal CPA, and he literally laughed talking to me about it. When, when your general fund is at 92 and 100 percent of your budget, and it should be at 25 percent, you've collected way more in taxes and trash fees. I know that's not a tax. Ha ha. 
but you've collected way too much money and it's off the people's back, not yours. There's people that can't afford this and you're collecting it and now you're deciding how to spend it after it's collected. With government, it's the other way around. You decide first, you let the people know, then you collect the money. Uh, and I did, I got an incomplete explanation last year. I'd really like to hear more on it. Since you've instituted this trash fee, you've been collecting about, well, it's actually more than 10,000 a year on average, but one year it was 9,700, 10,500, 10,100, 38,600, 10,900, 8,100. You've collected more than the trash fee has cost. Now, I did get a letter from Mr. Kondike that said that uh, you were rolling the DPW's portion of that into the trash fee. I don't remember when that was ever passed. In fact, I do remember distinctly that when the DPW picking up leaves was talked about, that was going to be out of the DPW. It was not going to go into the trash fee. It was not going to go into anything. It was a separate thing. Yes, Republic or whoever it is now picks up leaves if they're in bags. But the Tink Claw, that's all the village is doing, not Republic's doing. So really it has no business being in, rolled into the trash fee. I, I really don't know where that idea came from, but it's kind of like a double tax. If we're already paying the DPW and then we're rolling part of what they do into the trash fee, that doesn't pass the smell test. But the amount of money you've collected there's no, there's no excuse to have a fund balance that large and the people of the village shouldn't be funding your pet projects. And that would include the park master plan, which we will get to on the next thing. But I would ask you guys, just one of you for God's sake, stand up and say, no, that trash fee is not fair. No, it should either be eliminated or reduced. Even if you reduced it, you, you've, you've picked up, oh God, thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, pretty much because of this trash fee. If, if the trash fee is, and I don't understand why it keeps going up every year, but that's another topic. But if the trash fee is 300,000, and you're collecting 200,000 more this year than you need, and the fund balance is already obnoxiously high, then why can't you take 200,000 out of the trash fee this year and tax the people for $100,000 rather than 300,000? Tax us for a portion of it because you're already collecting the rest of it. It's just not right. One of you needs to stand up and say that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on fiscal year 19 budget? <clears throat> Seeing none, do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So move. Second. Motion Duff, second Dumont. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> brings us to second public hearing, Farrah Miller Park <clears throat> Master Plan Draft. Uh, draft four now. Um, uh, Mr. Berg, is there anything you'd like to say on the master plan before I open it? Um, this has been in the works for 20 months. Um, we started back in October of 2016 uh, with a workshop about the master plan. Uh, just for, for council's knowledge, this latest draft incorporates the last discussion that we had um, there weren't a lot of changes made to it. It was mainly reprioritizing some things um, in the back part of the plan. Um, uh, we've gotten 
uh, very little public feedback thus far um, since last June's meeting where we had a lot of public feedback um, about the athletic fields. Um, we had two emails on the topic. We've handed out, I think, five hard copies um, to residents that have requested them. Um, but certainly hope everyone's had a chance to take a look at it, uh, interested in whatever feedback um, we get tonight. Um, and every time I talk about this, I just want to stress again that um, adoption of a master plan doesn't mean that everything is happening or has to happen. It's basically a guide for the next 20 years of potential park improvements. And so any individual project that council may want to consider will come back to council for specific uh, discussion and, uh, and funding and approval. Um, and then lastly, um, once this is adopted, uh, we will be using this to apply for grants for new playground equipment. That'll be probably the first order of business. Uh, the survey we did, um, that was the one thing that people seem to be really united on. So um, having something like this in place will allow us to put forth a better grant application than if we hadn't gone through this process. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's all I have. All right. Uh, with that, do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Uh, motion Duff, second Dumont. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is open. Uh, please come up, uh, give us your name and your address, and any comments. Hi, my name is John McDonald. I live at 1155 Glengarry. These expansions, rain, rain garden, butterfly garden, can't you stand outside and look at a butterfly? Can't you walk out your door and see the rain? I heard this gentleman say something about $38,000 on a garbage deal. Between eight and ten five thousand dollars all of a sudden $38,000 pops in there. I seem to think this man has a point with a lot of money being collected but some of these things on here, to me, seem to be a waste of money. I love this place. I've been here 21 years. I brought my children here. The only thing I see something like this doing is bringing more people into the area. And we don't need any more people in the area. We have enough problems with the idiots out here driving up and down Rose Lawn or any other residential street like <coughs> it's the Indy 500. There's nothing wrong with our police department. They do the best they can. But I get tired of yelling at somebody who has a child in the back of their car racing down a road and giving me a finger because I yelled at them. We don't need to be wasting money. We need to be putting signs out on these streets that say, drive like your child lives here. Drive like somebody you love lives here. Not these children playing put it through their thick skulls that there's something better to do than put somebody else's kid or somebody else's grandchild or niece, nephew, or whatever in danger. There's a lot of things on that board right there that you don't need to waste your money on. And you should really think about it before you start thinking about spending money. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh uh, yeah, Jeff Miller, twenty six twelve Brisbane. Uh, every he had a lot of good points. The only point I want to kind of make out is you guys did stick pretty much to what we discussed. What was it last September in the joint mm -hmm. meeting or August? I noticed on one of the new play areas on Brisbane. It says remove uh, surrounding woods or whatever, I can't see it from here. I don't want to see any mature trees taken out of there. There's a lot of oak trees in there. And, yeah. and, and I don't know what that means by remove trees. Just to be clear on, on what's in there, um, the areas where there's removal, it's really invasive species and undergrowth that's oh, interfering with the mature okay. trees. Um, I don't think there's really any plan to remove any mature trees in there. Yeah, I can't really object to some of it, but you know what he said does make a <coughs> lot of sense too. You got to use some common sense, but uh, but yeah, I don't want to see any mature trees taken out. You know, whether invasive, that's one thing, or underbrush. But uh, 
don't forget there is a house that is just on the north side of what actually is Waukito Street there that's undeveloped and there is a lot of underbrush in there and stuff but I'm sure that he doesn't really want that taken out because it is like a privacy area in there. and like I said the rest of the stuff I can't speak for because you know I don't live in that area but you know like I said it seemed like it was pretty much to point what we were talking about last year on that joint session and the other thing is is do not open anything from the main parking lot in Clara Miller out into any residential street because I think you'll end up with uh, another conga line if that happens <laughs> <laughs> I already had one thank you <laughs> thanks anybody else master plan yes sir Yeah, I'd like to add. And name and address for uh, Dwayne Patnod, live on Roselawn. I'd like to add, like this gentleman just said, uh, I got people fly up and down my street. They do more than 25 miles an hour. And in the final, I concern the rest of the stop signs you got in the neighborhood, you might as well take them out because nobody stops for them, majority of them. And if you want to spend some money, do something about Glengarry making left hand turns either way on Benstein because you got one car at a time it's got to go and make a left it doesn't matter which way they go go north or south you need a green arrow there you also might as well put one down here at this end because you got so much people coming in this area and you got people living in different areas they're coming through here to get the M5 in the morning rush hour it, it's really bad uh, and I'm, over there on um, um, Beck Road and um, West Road, it's the same thing. Left in this whole area needs left turning lanes with green arrows. Thank you. Linda Hamilton, 2598 Roselawn. Uh, I have a problem with the Vita Trail. It comes so close to the residence, right off of Waco Wacko, and I don't know any of the street. The dirt road I like. But it's his house, I'm going to tell you. It, you'll, they'll be looking in his family room where he's watching TV all day. Then he has a back, you know, French doors. They'll see right into his house unless he, you know, puts up a privacy fence and everything. I don't know. I don't like it so close. And I talk to other neighbors. They don't like it either, but I don't know where they're at. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. 20 feet is not that far from property line to have all that traffic walking through. Can't you make it at least a little more <laughs> farther away from the homeowners? it's always encroaching on homeowners that we complain about whatever you do we don't want you know the noise the traffic or next to our house that's all, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Julie Miller, 2612 Brisbane, Wolverine Lake, Michigan, and I'm very proud to say I live in Wolverine Lake now. I want to thank the council that came against you because I didn't like what you were doing, and I want to thank you for listening to the people. Sounds like there may be a little bit more listening that has to happen, but I really appreciate what you did, that you listened to us and that you made a different master plan that we're a wonderful village. We there's no empty vacant houses. There's no tr um, shrubbery all grown over because no one takes care of it. People listen to each other. Um, we, the police, we have no crime. We have a wonderful police force. I mean, we really have it all. And thanks for keeping it small enough to not incorporate big problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Mike Dorsey, 2425 Brisbane. Um, 
referring to your master plan, on page 10 it showed that 80% of the participants in the survey were satisfied, very satisfied with their Miller Park. Uh, they felt the park was in, you know, on page 13, they felt the park was in good condition. They want you to preserve the open spaces and add more trees. Um, on page 14, there was the increased traffic volume on Brisbane, and, you know, with that was part of the Congo line too. Um, at the at that meeting and at meetings since then, especially the last one, we talked about um, the natural play area that was going to be right at Brisbane and Waikato, um, with concerns about additional traffic coming in. One of the council members said that they were going to be extending the parking lot that's there now, taking out the turnaround and just making parking or something, which would get it closer so that the people could park there and then come into the natural play area. Any person who lives in that subdivision from Brisbane back is not going to drive up to Glengarry and drive down to Benstein and turn into Clara Miller Park and drive all the way back to Brisbane to play on that natural play area ask that you remove them, take them out. We talked to you about um, the bocce ball courts, uh, the new large shelter, and a chess grove that was going to be put back in the, that same corner back in there, or actually in the, in the corner across it of the uh, south of where the natural play area is going to be. Because there is no parking there, and you're going to keep drawing cars onto Brisbane. You know, the Brisbane, Connecticut thing, everybody's aware of it. I mean, it's just like Wolverine Drive, except what you're doing is adding to this problem. They're trying to solve, the chief has been working like crazy trying to solve the Wolverine Drive thing on the other side of the village. Now we're going to add a few more problems for them. So I think that we need to take them out of there. I know we keep hearing, well, this is a, a kind of a, a guide. This really doesn't mean anything. I told you at one of the meetings I spent 53 years in the construction industry and have worked in many municipalities in Michigan. And what happens is a couple years down the road, Nathan Bird is gone, we have a new council. They decide, well, we're going to do this and this and this, and we're going to come and say, wait a minute. These guys said we weren't really going to do this. This was just a guide. And you get the excuse, well, we're following the master plan, so that's what we're going to do. So I've heard that repeatedly. And a lot of residents or people just accept it as fact and walk, to walk away. They don't need to, but I think some of these things definitely need to be taken out of this plan before it's finalized. Um, uh, there's some talk about adding parking on Terry Street, some parallel parking, I think, at that, the Congo Line meeting that we had. A lot. We were very adamant about not adding pavement anywhere for parking. That we don't, we don't want parking in the subdivision. And by creating some of these little different things that you've talked about with some of the picnic areas and that, you're, you're good. there has to be parking. They're not going to use it. So I, I think they're they're counterproductive. Um, on page 27 in your in the final master plan, there's a paragraph there that talks about a natural play area between Woodlawn and Brisbane. Now, I don't know if that's just a misprint that ended up in there or if you're planning on having two natural play areas, one on each side of Brisbane. And there shouldn't be one on either side. Um, the other issue I have is that Brisbane and Waikato, where the bike path comes across Brisbane, We watch kids and adults, mostly bicyclists, come very close to getting run over there continuously. Um, about a week and a half ago, I pulled out of the driveway and went towards Glengarry. I was on ben, uh, Brisbane. I could see a young lady coming across the bike path, heading out of Clara Miller Park. She was probably 13 or 14 years old and just hauling. And I'm like, there's no way she's going to stop for Brisbane. I can see that. So I stopped back easily 20 feet before I even got to, up to the stop sign. She got to the, 
to the Brisbane, and instead of going straight across, turned, coming right at me, still hadn't looked, and was looking behind her to see if there's anybody coming down Brisbane from Glengarry, and I was stopped dead. <laughs> when she looked up, she was probably 10 feet from the front of my truck, and just ditched it right into the park, and then kept on going across through the park, probably because she was embarrassed. But I think if maybe the chief or if any of you guys would like, I would meet with you out there just to show you what's going on there. I think there's some fairly simple solutions. Uh, at the overgrowth is out too close to the road is what it is. You can't, you don't even know the bike path is there from that side. You can see it from the other side, but there's a lot of people that just kind of roll through there, and someone's going to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get first times for first time folks first. So we'll, we'll do you, then we'll do uh, Renwick, and then we'll see if there's any other first time on the public hearing. And we'll come back for a second. Uh, well, oh, and name and address, please. Yeah, Larry Scotland, 2432 Brisbane. Uh, thanks for the youth comment. Anyway, uh, the BMX trail. Uh, I think it should either be taken out of it or tell us how big your BMX is going to be. I talked to Waterford. That's ridiculous to put something like that in there. <coughs> uh, there's a hill there now. That's about, there's only enough room for that in that area. So I hope you take it out of this master plan. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Come on up, Mr. Renwick. You're, you're next. Uh, Dave Renwick, 685 Amenia. Uh, people have referenced last year's meeting where lots of folks turned out in opposition to parts of this plan. I'm sorry, but it really shows that there was a genuine disconnect between council and the people on that <coughs> plan. And one of the holdovers from that plan that I was really surprised, I haven't had the time to check out much of anything, but you've still got a $150,000 concession stand, bathroom modification, whatever, for the park. $150,000. You could build a house for that much money. And that's going to be for a concession stand? What do we need a concession stand in Clara Miller Park for? We have a corn roast once a year. I worked the corn roast for five years as KP, food preparation. There were no problems. We didn't need a concession stand. What the heck, outside of for CW3 soccer fields, what the heck do we need a concession stand in Clara Miller Park for? That's absolutely ridiculous. And at 150 grand, it's even more ridiculous. Uh, this whole master plan, as has been pointed out, once you guys have this in place, you can pretty much go ahead and do any of it that you want. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing at all. Also, all this wouldn't be possible without that trash fee. Uh, pocket parks, too. I, I don't really see anything in there on pocket parks, but I noticed at the last meeting talking about the pocket park for Oak Island, there was a huge chuck hole that hadn't been addressed and got addressed because of the meeting on the pocket park. The pocket park you put in on my street, on Amenia. I had my father at the house last year and I would walk him around the, par or around the block in a wheelchair. There's spots on Amenia where taking an elderly person over it on a wheelchair is a fool's mission. I now have a granddaughter, 
and I walk her around the block in a stroller, and the same thing can be said. There's very, very bad parts of the road, but we had enough money to buy and put in a pocket park on our street. Never mind that you can't take a wheelchair or a stroller up and down the street, but we got a pocket park and we really need it because every time I go past it, nobody's on it. I've seen kids on that pocket park one time and I go past it several times a day. So we spent 30 grand on nothing. You spent 30 grand on nothing. And now you want, according to this, well over a million dollars. And I, I have to laugh, I, I heard a gentleman quoting that 85% of people are satisfied. Well, 85% of the surveyed people, there were 92 people from Wolverine Lake that took part in that survey. Even if you want to consider that only one person from each household, and usually at those meetings it's a husband and wife, but even if you want to say every one of those 92 people represents one household, there's 1,740 households in the village. I figured it out at home. I've got the figures at home. But you had the opinion of 5.3% of the citizens. That's what you're basing all of this on. This is what the people want on 5.3% of citizen input? That is ridiculous. You, you said, actually, you said in the paper, in the spinal column, along with the other stuff that I do not consider entirely truthful, you said that you did everything you could to get input from the public on this. No, you guys missed one thing. Every one of you missed one thing. Put it to a vote of the people. Take this master plan and put it on the next ballot. We got one coming up. You've got time to get it on there. Take your master plan that you think everybody wants, that everybody's put in input on, and put it on the next ballot. It's that simple. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Sure. Um, uh, name and address. Oh, I'm Terry Barletta. I live at 1450 Connecticut Street. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that the first portion is zone or is priority one. So the prioritization at the end is really projects in the order that we think they're generally important. Oh, okay. Want to do well, them. then, what's zone W? Is that the first section of the park? What is zone W? Yeah, it's the west side. The west side. The west side. Uh, okay, well, well, where I'm at is just at the end, end of Connecticut, just before Brisbane. And if you look at the plan um, where they show the, the current trees, well, y'all don't show my trees that are um, the park trees that are up to my fence. So, because um, if you go out in the park, there are no park trees currently on the on people's property lines but there's two that are on my right up to my fence so somehow y'all missed it and it's not on here so I'm a little curious if um, if y'all are fixing to chop down those trees to replace them Def definitely not so you're gonna leave the trees that are there in behind my fence so I, you don't I you're not following my question let, let me let me let me say what I what I what I said earlier because I don't know the two specific trees that you're talking about, but in the plan, in the in the discussion, I'm not planning to take down any mature uh, okay, any so mature trees, taking down some underbrush. Okay, so you're not pieces. understanding my question. Yeah. Along everybody's property line in Connecticut, you guys are proposing to plant trees. Okay, that's a proposal that you want to plant trees along the property mm -hmm. lines. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, these trees that you want to plant behind everybody's properties, mm -hmm. along their fence lines. How close are you guys thinking you're gonna plant them? Any idea, have you thought about that? I don't think we have an exact, an exact uh, Okay, because there's two that you don't show on your plan that are behind my house, behind my fence. They're the only two on Connecticut <laughs> 
behind a fence, which is behind my house. Follow now? That don't show on the plan. Okay? Mm -hmm. My trees are not on this plan. Got it. So if you're going to replace trees, will you chop down my trees to look like, and put a new tree to look like everybody else's trees? No, no. Okay. So my next question is, is when you all put in these trees along everybody's property line, will you guys be maintaining those trees? Because you don't maintain the trees behind my property now. I mean, they grow like just crazy, you know. The branches are helter-skelter. I just go chop down what I don't like because they're growing into my fence. So I mean, I got I, I got to do what I got to do. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So I chop, I cut what grows into my fence, even the roots. I don't care. I mean, they're coming in my yard and ruining my yard. So I chop them out. Trees on village property, if they're a problem, get a hold of the village. But they don't, they don't. I mean, we're lucky if they weed whack along the fences once a month. <clears throat> so they don't take really maintain along there. But when the branches are this low and we're starting to grow three, four, five new trees, I, I cut them out because it's coming into my yard. I don't want all those trees. So I'm just curious. You're going to leave what's there. I mean, last year there was a dead tree leaning against my fence. When I called the village, and talked to the girls I said there's a dead tree can somebody chop it down oh, we don't know what to do okay because you've, you've worked here how long now I called again okay I really want somebody to cut down the tree before it falls on my fence we don't know what to do well I'm pretty smart I called DTE now I don't know who the contractor is Ashbon, whatever they chopped down the tree now they chopped it down, half of it fell on my fence, but all the deadness that was diseased, they left in my yard and wouldn't remove it. And their answer was, well, it's disease, we can't remove it. So I had to clean up the village's stuff and they left a big mess in my yard. So, and I'm a disabled vet, it took me a while to clean that mess up. So, you know, I'm just kind of wondering how this is going to be maintained. You know, y'all don't maintain it well now. Is it going to be better maintained when it's all beautified? That is the plan to continue to improve the maintenance in the park overall. So you'll have to on, hire more people. On, on the specific on the specific issue of your tree, I think I'm going to have to refer that to the village administrator and ask him to follow up with you. Okay, so you'll have to hire more people to maintain the park. Because what you have now, there simply won't be enough people to maintain it. So that'll cost more money for maintenance of the park, right? Not necessarily. I would think so. More man hours to all that weed whacking around, all this 140 trees that you're proposing to plant. That's a lot of trees. Right? Not necessarily, and well, I think I think at this point we're starting to get into debate. Really, well, public hearing isn't isn't for debate. I'm trying well, to answer I'm just questions saying that I those can, are things to consider. The maintenance that's mm -hmm. that's money. Yep. So, and I agree with that gentleman that said, I think the residents need to put this to vote when you're talking this kind of money. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, let me see if we've got any any first timers first. Anybody else first call to the public? Or sorry. First time around on the public hearing. <clears throat> oh, seeing none. Yeah, come on up. John McDonald, 1155 Glengarry. A bocce ball court. Are we serious? And this maintenance thing, that is a thing. The best thing I've seen you people do is put plastic bags out there for people to pick up the dog crap with. <laughs> I wish the guys and people would use them. <laughs> I mean, I, I bring my own bags with me, but you know, my dog seems to crap a lot, so I use up my bags, but I'm glad to walk in there and be able to grab a couple and keep them. So maintenance, a bocce ball court. For a long time, I didn't even know what the hell bocce ball was. I just happened to be in Menards and saw a you know, bocce ball set. What I see you people actually doing is trying to bring more people to this area. We don't need more people to this area. 
like these people say. I see a lot of Brisbane and Woodlawn people here. So it seems there's going to be a big problem. I really didn't get a real good look at this. And I see I'm going to have to go home and look it over real hard. But we don't need more people in this area. We have low crime because we don't have a lot of people in this area. Our biggest problem is the lead-footed people around here. Them and their muscle cars. Don't get me wrong. When I was a kid, I saw I enjoyed muscle cars. But I did not run through my neighborhood. I did not use excessive speed in any area where my friends, my friends, brothers and sisters, or anything like that were. So I don't want to see more people in this area. Because you bring more people, you bring more crime, you bring more <laughs> idiots. Your your little toddler five to twelve year olds. I don't want to see toddlers and five and twelve year olds playing together because the older a child gets, the less respectful they are, it seems anymore. We should really seriously consider this all over again. And like these people say, if it's going to get serious, you should really bring it to a vote. Because this is this is not best for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me go to you, and then I'll go to you. So yeah, come on up. Okay. Well, there's something I already talked about. I like the idea of taking it to a vote because most of my neighbors are elderly. They do not use computers. They don't even know what's going on. You can send it out, but they're not going to respond to it because they're not aware of it. So maybe we need something more local, maybe door to door, mail it to their house, something. Oh, I don't, I don't know how to do that, Linda. Oh, really? I didn't know. So let's think of the age group and their skills and get the information out. Thank you. I'm Jeff Miller, 2612 Brisbane. Uh, I believe Terry back here did make a good point that I kind of missed earlier. She was talking about the maintenance. It's definitely going to cost more for maintenance. Now, four guys on a DPW ain't going to be able to maintain that whole park, plus take care of the village. I was on a DPW for 38 years. And even then, we had up to six guys at one time, and it was hard to take care of stuff and maintain what little was in the park at that time. So just be aware that it will cost money. Now, whether it's outsourced or not, but I wouldn't want to see that personally, but it will cost money if you got to add another guy to the staff or whatever. But bear that in mind. I know you had a hard time putting the fourth guy back on because how much it was going to cost for that fourth guy. So just bear that in mind. Anybody else? Mr. Renwick. Dave Renwick, 685. Uh, this is it. Uh, you guys would have left soccer fields on this thing if it hadn't been for that young lady there. She got the word out, so which... Oh, what's that? You? Oh, that was her. Okay. <laughs> you and you. She, she, she did all the walking. <laughs> which, whichever, it was gotten out. You guys thought you were getting the word out, and I think you got a real lesson in no, you weren't. And you're still not. And even if you do, the citizens of this village, I, I'm trying to think how many years ago it was, council was going to ram a sewer line down Amenia. Everybody thought it was a done deal. I got up a petition. I went door to door myself. And everybody but two on the street said no. But I heard from several people in the process of doing this, well, council is going to do what they want anyways. The people feel helpless and hopeless when it comes to you guys. It's like you're not reachable. You might think you're doing a good job getting it out there. You're not. Put it to a vote. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? I do have a 
have a question. Um, and I know you're hoping on, on grants and, and funds and stuff and donations, but how much is this going to cost the taxpayers? Because it's got to cost taxpayers something. So what are you thinking it's going to cost the taxpayers? The, the estimate in here for all the improvements is about over 20 years about one million dollars about fifty thousand a year uh, okay that's, well, that's that's an estimate in here and let me say what mr bird said at the beginning that each and every one of these projects that would come forward would have to come before council first right but you can't pass something i mean if you can't have a plan in place to do something and hope there's some money so somewhere you're going to have to get monies so apparently you're going to have to rely on the homeowners and tax dollars to pay for stuff so even in the next year one to four year priority plan is money's going to have to come from somewhere so what is your projected monies from the homeowners got to be something because i mean that's a pretty you know to pass something then and the homeowners don't have a say so and then all of a sudden everybody's property taxes go up I mean I think my property taxes are extremely high for my house forty three hundred dollars a year oh that's a little high however I'm very lucky because I'm one of the few in the village and I believe I don't know as um, your 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 treasure here he was quite rude to me last year because um, he yelled at me in front of everybody in the office because um, apparently he doesn't like something that I'm entitled to, being a disabled veteran of 20 years and not employable because I'm a 100% disabled veteran. Um, the governor, 2013, gave all disabled, 100% disabled veterans, non employable, that we don't have to pay taxes, property taxes. That's just an entitlement we earned because we were hurt in the military and he kind of informed everybody in the office, I don't pay property taxes. But for those people that will have to, that's gonna affect them. I mean, you gotta be honest. So if you push something through without the homeowners voting for it, we're gonna, everybody's gonna be surprised when their taxes go up. So I think you gotta be forthcoming on what everybody's gonna be taxed with. You gotta have that in consideration and not surprise everybody we've already been surprised once last year if you remember and everybody showed up so please consider it thank you thank you anybody else right let me, let me let me see if we've got we've got twice through council do we want to hear a third time sure okay uh, yes sir I don't know. john mcdonald 155 oh. glengarry like this woman i'm a vet I'm disabled I've got great taxes that's one of the reasons I stay here I pay less than two grand a year and I'm a happy camper and anything you people do to raise my taxes you're, you my limited income is stretched to a point now that it puts me in the hole every month for me to pay for a flipping bocce ball court or a butterfly field or a rainforest or garden whatever you're wasting my money you're wasting my time and it's it's ridiculous these people don't need their taxes raised if anything we need to start saving money we need to start taking care of the people in the streets and we need to stop worrying about bringing people here thank you for your service. all right anybody else Mr. Rim? as far as the disconnect goes Dave Renwick 685 Amenia before you ask as far as the disconnect goes the question you just asked council do you want to hear it Shame on us for coming. If council doesn't want to hear us anymore, that's the saddest day of my life. And that that, that question is even asked at this table is a shame. And as for the young lady that asked where the money's going to come from for this master plan, 
I noticed nobody even mentioned to her that you've got a million dollars in the general fund. I, I'm trying to remember what the word is, unrestricted or un, whatever. What what? That's great. Unrestricted un. Yeah, you've got over a million dollars sitting there right now. So they don't have to collect any more taxes. But you're gonna, through that trash fee, which put that million dollars in there to begin with. So as far as paying for it goes, why didn't one of you actually break the stone face and say, we've already got a million dollars in the general fund? Because people don't know that. People hear facts and figures and, oh, our budget got approved and we got a top rating and blah, blah, blah. What the heck do we have a million dollars in the general fund for? We're supposed to have 25% of the budget. I've talked to municipal CPAs, 25% of the budget is what's supposed to be in there and we've got way more than that. We've got three and four times that. So yeah, they can go out and blow a million dollars at whim right now. Thank you very much. And why do I gotta tell the people that why don't you tell them that? Debbie Malvin, 25 Payne Court, Wolverine Lake. I have lived here 35 years, and the village has been nothing. And Dave, I, I, my son went to school with your daughter. Um, my son went to school with a lot of people who have been here for so long. And what we're doing yeah, with the property please taxes. Please address the, the front here. I'm sorry. What we're doing with the property taxes, our houses and everything else have gone up. This area has gone up, what, three, five, seven percent on the taxes. I pay low taxes as well. I'm very happy, but I've been here for 35 years. If I was going to go and move into a new area, no matter what area, I couldn't pay what I'm paying now but it's because I've been here in Stain. And people want to complain about the park and the old trees. I'm a master gardener. If we don't plant new trees, we weren't gonna have anything for the future because a lot of our oak trees that we have have the disease. So we have to keep on building on the parks and making the area very desirable for people to come way past our lifetime. We're at the top of our, our we're, we're done. But what we want to do is bring in our, council, I'm audience. sorry, we want to bring our children in and have our grandchildren, have our new families come in here. That is a wonderful, desirable place with low crime rate, with a beautiful park, with walking area. I'm all for what, you know, everything that we're doing. And I think congratulations. And I'm, for 35 years, I'm very, very happy and very proud to say that I've been able to live here and put my children through wonderful schools. So. We're all going to have a little bit of something that we don't like or do whatever, but when it gets into a pissing match, that's, that's not a correct way to handle everything, in my opinion. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Debbie. I'm truly sorry that I have to come up oh, here again. Let's get name and address for the... Oh, 1450 Connecticut Street, Terry Barletta. She addressed the trees. So now I have to address my concern about these trees that y'all want to put in. So if you're going to re put trees in along our property line, one, you need to consider how close to our fences you're going to put the trees, and what kind, because these uh, maple or oak trees that y'all are talking about, well, you need to look at how far out these roots grow and where you're going to place the trees, because they do grow way far out and these trees get you know pretty thick around. So consider like what, what size trees you're gonna get because they grow very fast, eight to 10 feet a year and the roots are low and they grow wide. And so you, when you consider where you're gonna place them, I don't want them growing in my septic field and I'm pretty sure nobody else does because the majority of our septic fields are in the backyard. So, and then she addressed the park. Well, that's nice. And we have like the corn roast in the park and gosh, since I, I moved here, I've gone every year. I don't. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen any of you there. So if you can't come to a corn roast, you're going to come to the park when it's all nice and pretty. So you all aren't doing it for yourselves, so because you can't come to the corn roast. 
<laughs> I didn't think you'd answer that question either. So I'm just wondering. That's what I thought. <clears throat> John McDonald, 1155 Glengarry. Now, I just stood here and had a woman look at me because of trees. This isn't about trees. This is about unnecessary spending. And the individual that made me feel that she was talking to me specifically is wearing a necklace that is more than my as much as my car. This has nothing to do with trees. You want to beautify the area? Fine. We don't need a bocce ball court. We don't need butterfly gardens. We don't need rain gardens. I've been here 21 years. I've raised children here. I'm raising a grandson here. And my family comes to my house in my area. So this isn't about making us better. This is about wasting money, wasting space. So don't think that we're dead set against everything you're doing, because we're not. <coughs> Everybody wants to improve. but we don't want you to waste. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, do I hear a motion to close? Second. Motion Duff, second Malik. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, thanks everybody. Um, we do have, oops. Council discussion on the park first up on a regular agenda, so I know many of you are interested in that, and that'll be next. Okay, does bring us to item 12A, council discussion, draft of Clara Miller Park Master Plan. Uh, council's pleasure. We can take it back, um, look at it again in another work session, see if there are any other changes we want to make. We've got some input, we've got some questions. We can, uh, you know, Vote to adopt. We can. Council's pleasure. Yeah. I think, uh, Mr. President, given uh, 20 months of work that's gone behind the plan, open sessions, uh, plans that have involved uh, involving the uh, residents, uh, I guess 20 months ago is when we first started this process. Uh, and with the understanding that what we're dealing with is uh, a movable, flexible concept. Nothing's in stone. I think that's been uh, said over and over again here. Uh, as far as the number of trees and where the trees are located, uh, this is a schematic plan. It has nothing to do with actuality and where trees are going to be. And so there's a movement that's going to go on over the next 20 years, and a lot of discussions on each of these projects is going to occur, from bocce ball to et cetera. Uh, we're here every month. Actually, we're here twice a month. And uh, in addition to that, we've got a wonderful staff upstairs that's available to answer questions at any point in time that people want to come in. So I'm going to make a motion that what we do is adopt the plan as presented uh, and uh, move from here on to implement implementation phases. And in those implementation phases, uh, the public will be uh, certainly advised as to what sections we're going to go and what priorities and the estimated budgets. Uh, this council works very hard uh, to make sure that we do have a balanced budget. And uh, just for some background information, uh, that that million dollars that keeps getting alluded to, I think at one point in time, uh, we were looking at going down to $400,000. Uh, we were at one point in time, uh, I think over 1,000000 mm -hmm. And what we've been doing is improving roads. And we have a five-year road plan. And I believe, given current forecast, that budget, that general fund, is going to be somewhere down to 40%, if not 30%, of what our uh, general operating fund is. So that's how you run a business. That's certainly how we're running the villages on your behalf. 
So I, again, I'll make a motion that we adopt the plan as presented. All right. I hear a motion. So moved. I hear a second from uh, Dumont, right? Uh, discussion. Yeah, I, I have a lot of discussion. Uh, you know, I sit and I can agree with a lot of these people and disagree with some, okay? But uh, one of the things I have a question on, uh, and I don't know if we needed a friendly to this motion, that there will be no action taken in spending without the public's input on particular items as it goes. I don't think you need an amendment for that. You know, I don't know. Well, I, I'm just yeah, saying, I want to. Everything has to come before council. As okay, a I think that's well, a given. Anyway, that's a given. That's a given. That's a given. I just, I want myself on record saying this is how I feel. Okay, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I can uh, relate to things uh, like the lady on Connecticut. Okay, with the trees, I've said it for years. Our maintenance plan on trees is a joke. Okay, I hate to say it. I'm a council person. I was on council in the past. You know, we, we run out there and cut stuff down once and clean it up once it falls. Well, that isn't solving our problem. And we want to add more problems. You know, it's like she talks about roots. Well, unfortunately, trees, they have septic fields in their backyards. The roots are going to go after the moisture that's in those fields. That's why they grow like they do. Okay? There's just so many different, I'm using that only as an example. There's just so many different things that you know we need to address another one is the uh, I have to find it here the the person that mentioned uh, oh uh, I didn't write the yeah the lady at 2598 Rose Lawn yeah. about bike paths too close to a house okay I have the misfortune of living on a corner which I chose to move into that house 41 years ago for anybody that wants to talk about time being here all right I have an inconvenience of people going by and I'm on my deck and they're there okay but I chose to move into that house at that location these people aren't haven't chosen to have that bike path 20 foot from their house or property line there's stuff like that that has to really be addressed for their privacy and I think it's very important our plans you know we've gone through how many months of this stuff like John had mentioned but we have to consider the resident first before we do anything else because these people are putting the money up to make it happen and also money up I think Michael can end mm -hmm. add to this when's the last time our basic tax base went up in the village or you know how long has this rate been in at nine point whatever you're talking about the military right oh since 96 okay so so we haven't raised taxes your taxes have changed because of values all right mm -hmm. but the village hasn't come out and raised taxes all right what has happened with the selling of houses and, and the progression as to your taxes change by values that the state and the county equalize am i right michael yes sir okay and this that's also the amendment no no i'm just I saying they're talking to the point people of are talking plan about overall. taxes being raised the village isn't raising the taxes what i'm saying okay we've stayed at that number since 96 but the tax base changes with values and with the county and the state so so for those that are complaining about that fact you know it, it's not us doing it you know I'm, I'm playing both sides of the fence here okay as to defending us and also addressing some of their issues so I just don't want to see anything happen without like you had said it won't happen without a vote but it's very important that we consider all this. How many meetings and work sessions have we done in terms of this with public input? At least, at least ten. Yeah, I believe at least ten. I would, I would, I would. No, I don't think there's been ten public hearings on this. No, but but open public. Meetings. Well, every meeting's open to the public. How many people show up? I'm talking about a basic, open public meeting like this is here. So, you know, so we've had a park, every meeting we've had two park planning meetings Bob we've had work sessions that have been open joint with with parks and rec mm -hmm. and you're saying that we haven't had had openness in terms no, of no I never said we didn't have openness you're implying it no I'm not I'm saying we haven't had a public hearing on it yes we have this so, is the second so, public hearing on so, it. So, so now, just yes, wait. second public not no I, let's be clear here this is actually the public hearing we've had we had last June it was the month before the public hearing we had the large crowd 
we decided to bring it back before having the official public hearing. Right. We've had a visioning session, we had a work session with Park and Rec, um, and we've had multiple meetings in which it was discussed at length at the council during a regular meeting or on occasion at, during work sessions. So, but you've had one public hearing. It's so it's I know closed. it's closed. It's closed, Bob. So let me let Bob finish, and then I can go to. Yeah, well, that's all I'm saying is is I don't want anything misconstrued in any way in the public's eye or this council's eye. Okay. We're here for the people that, you know, we're part of those people paying those taxes, mm -hmm. all right? So I just, I want things addressed, that's all. And like I said about the, a path going too close to a house and different things, uh, it's an important thing to me. The people's point of view is important. And we're here to represent the people. Yep. So. Oh, I don't need applause, please. Okay. Uh, other comment? Dave? Monday, we have a park and rec meeting here at 7 o'clock. If anybody wants to come, it's a little bit less formal, and we can have a bit of a discussion that's, that's two-way. I think it's a shame that you guys have the time to come here, get on a microphone, and speak toward us, and we can't respond. It sounds like we're either not hearing you or ignoring you, and it's procedural. It's not appropriate for us to comment when you are giving us your ideas and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I feel bad for that personally, but Monday, the third Monday, seven o'clock of every month, we have a park and rec meeting and it's right here. So um, I think I am in favor of adopting it now as presented. I think we've put a lot of work into listening not just tonight but across the last 20 months to everything that a wide swath of the village has had to say in a variety of forums i think this plan as it is is a good reflection of what people would like to see in the park over the next 20 years i think on individual pieces on individual projects as with any big plan there's a lot that needs to be worked out and i think every single one of those pieces needs to come back go through the process we would go with any individual project in the park. And I think this is a good time to remind everybody of why we started this process in the first place, which was Clara Miller Park had for a long time been coasting on momentum. There was no overall plan, there was no direction. Individual things would get fixed, but it was very difficult to make decisions without a general guideline. What do we wanna be? What's the vision of this park? Where do we want to go in the future? I think this reflects it. I think this park, this plan does a really good job of spreading a little bit of the use out there, retaining a lot of the natural features, and puts this especially on pace to being able to secure grant money to do things like get updated playground equipment, to make improvements in the heavily used <coughs> west area, and to really, to really move us along. Um, if we adopt this tonight, I think the next thing we'll need to do is sit down and look at the priority one list and say, okay, what do we want the administrator to start collecting information on? It's likely to be what we would collect in any pro in any project, but this gives us a blueprint. It gives us a, a place to start, and it gives us some organization around that process. So <coughs> I intend to support the motion. Um, further discussion? Seeing none, let me get a roll call vote. Scott. Yes. Nedra. Yes. Dumont. Yes. Duff. Yes. Malik. Yes. McGee. Yes. All right. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody who came down tonight and let us know what you think. And everybody who has come, come out over the last 20 months to let us know. And I want to say again what I said last year. Stay involved. Mr. Dumont said we've got a park and rec meeting coming up. Come on down, let them know what you think about individual projects. We're gonna be bringing each one of these things back and taking a look at it, so thank you. Um, with that, next item is recommendations from planning. Uh, item B1, recommendation to appoint Cynthia Rocker as liaison to Park and Rec Board for a term expiring on December 31st, 2018. Uh, Mr. Nedder, you wanna introduce? Um, 
she's been on the board for uh, about a year or so, and she's been doing a good job. So she uh, she had uh, some interest in Parks and Rec board, so we needed a liaison because our other liaison ended up uh, uh, resigning. So that's, uh, that's about it. She'll do. I think she'll do a great job on Parks and Rec. Great. All right. Do I hear that as a motion? That was. <laughs> I'll second it. So motion, Nedro. Uh, I think great was the second action oh, for you, Jumon. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, to appoint Cynthia Rocker as liaison to Park and Rec for a term expiring December 31st, 2018. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, same same question to you, uh, Paul, Paul Sinder. Paul Snyder. Yeah, he's actually a uh, uh, newer Paul neighbor. Snyder. Moved in last <laughs> last year and uh, a couple, about four doors down from me and uh, he decided he wanted to get involved with uh, the village as far as the boards and commissions. Um, he's from Northville and he, he was very involved with the library uh, in Northville and, and uh, so he's still still involved with that but he wanted to get on village uh, uh, boards so he applied originally applied to the water board uh, had an opening on planning so we suckered him into getting on planning <laughs> and he was appointed last last month and he was at the water board meeting the water liaison yeah. came yeah. up and we said boy you could still get on the water board so uh we talked him <laughs> into that i so do remember that on his on his he's going to be doing yeah. double duty so he, he and he's a great guy so seems to be got good. the got the normal a little bit so all right i hear that as a motion to appoint paul snyder do i hear a second second uh second malik uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, all right, item three, <laughs> one, two, three, and four, they are all uh, different ordinances that need to happen uh, to add outdoor fireplaces, kitchens, pergolas, and temporary shade structures as accessory uses. What I'd like to do is start by taking a single motion to introduce those four ordinances, and then we can go to discussion. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. Motion Nedra, second Scott to introduce ordinance 106A 103, 106A 104, 105, 106. Uh, all right, discussion. Mr. Nedra, you want to give us a quick overview? Well, um, over the last couple of years, we've had uh, quite a bit of activity as far as people coming before the village and looking at putting outdoor fireplaces, outdoor kitchens, pergolas, and such around, uh, around around their property. So we had nothing that, that would allow that. So uh, planning's been working on this, I think, probably for over a year, and uh, had a lot of discussion on it. And uh, so uh, we looked into other communities and uh, looked at their ordinances, and, and Sally did a nice job of putting something together for us. So uh, uh, we looked at how it might fit in the community and, and thought it would be probably a good idea to allow those. So therefore, um, we looked at how to put some constraints on it and see how it would fit. Had a public hearing on it. And uh, so this is what we we're proposing as far as uh, um, Ordinances. The first one is actually um, we since it's going to be considered an accessory structure, we had to update our accessory structure mm -hmm. ordinance. So essentially, that's what the first one is. We did not also we did not in that ordinance have anything as far as uh, definition of a lot coverage. So we slipped that in there also, um, in, including we also included uh, pergolas and, and temporary shade uh, uh, structures. So so like a party tent. We didn't really have anything that referred to that either. So, um, so that's essentially the first ordinance. Um, the second ordinance um, was actually modifying setback on property lines. So that's that's the uh, um, that's the setback requirements pertaining to accessory structures, and we felt that uh, well we had. We had uh, ground level decks before in lakefront yards, and we really didn't have any constraints as far as where placement. So anything 18 inches or less can be put within five feet of the lakefront or property mm -hmm. line, well, or rear property line. And uh, anything over that would have to be at least 20 feet. So, and the other thing it says in there that uh, 
it pertains to you can't block your neighbor's view of the lake so there is a, a section in there on that um, third section is the bulk building restrictions which uh, pertains to lot coverage and uh, the amount of lot coverage as it pertains to accessory structures so that basically is uh, uh, that part of the ordinance and it also pertains to dimensions as far as I think we're allowing 64 square feet on uh, like a uh, temporary or a, a fireplace I'm saying sorry for the obstructions in the yard. right and also the height of the chimneys would be like it's limited to 10 feet so and the fourth one is uh, do, 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 do. A type size quantity for temporary right for accessory your, structures all your temporary so accessories. You're, you're only allowed one accessory structure in a, a rear yard or lake front so you have a choice essentially so that's what pertains to any other questions uh, all right uh, any input from our attorney i know you, you drafted these up so nope, i think you did a good job explaining it it's just different sections of your zoning ordinance that all kind of um reference each other so they had to be in different ordinances yeah it's essentially if, essentially if you add yeah. if it's you the allow, same change four if, times if yeah. you allow like a, a fireplace or an outdoor kitchen that it's referred to in accessory structures it's yeah. referred mm -hmm. to in definition sections right. and yeah. so it's essentially it's all different sections of the zoning ordinance that refer to lot right. coverage or whatever so i got a couple questions do you mind mm -hmm. sure. we throw them out that's that's what one's what discussion is for that's what discussion is for uh, this one is uh, an arcane question, but I like arcane questions, I guess. And the very first one, 106A, 103, second page, outdoor fireplaces. Mm -hmm. I must read too much of this stuff. Uh, last word, may. Should that be may or shall be constructed? May. I mean, may. May is right. In other words, it's a, I don't know, I've been in legal arguments with people whether you shall or may, whether it gives permission or is a direction. It, it because it's it may be equipped with a small hearth opening. It doesn't say shit. You, you don't have to have a. Are you I was looking up here. I'll throw, yeah, I'll throw, hold it. The next one. First, the first sentence. Anyways, okay. that's that's for a lawyer to decide. Outdoor. You might spend more money on word usage. Let, let, let me suggest that within the realm of, of those introduction, we're okay. Yeah. And let me ask the the attorney to take a look at it and see if that works. Let's word make a decision. Right. Right. On uh, uh, 106A, under property lines, accessory uses, uh, first page, section 1C. Right at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you have under the first column, use, accessories to single family dwellings, and then it says other buildings and structures. Now, I just want to make sure that, in my mind, that's not totally clear, but I'm not looking at all of the ordinances. I'm seeing a 50-foot setback. That, that refers to accessory uses that are not single-family dwellings. Okay. So it would so it would be a multifamily or uh, maybe a church or whatever. Not a garage. Whatever right? is. No, seemed no, pretty broad. No, I was just no, secure. it's whatever else is. It's not. referring to in okay. in the accessory uses section of the ordinance system. The other ones I it's, answered it's, myself it's kind of after confusing. rereading. Yeah, when that, you read that, that language stuff, didn't change at all. That, that yeah. was in the existing Power. ordinance, so. Yeah. No, I believe it was. I just was wondering if it needed further clarification. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Other buildings. It's really anything other than accessory to single family dwelling. Right. Okay. Anything. So whatever else is yeah. available on that, that uh, use. And they're restricted in other sections of our code anyway. Mm -hmm. and, uh, by definition. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Other points, questions? Looking at that, I would say that may is appropriate. Okay. Um, because it may be constructed. It may be constructed of one of those things, right. either or. Right. You know, it may mm -hmm. be steel, it may be concrete. So I would say that I would suggest that you keep may. All right. Shell is going to be more constrictive. Yeah. Maybe okay. There's some new material. Mm hmm. <laughs> Okay, dokie. Um, Other questions, comments? Well, we're introducing tonight. So. Oh, we're introducing. We're, intru we're introducing tonight, but I'm sorry. But it's exactly the right time to ask any of these questions, yeah. and then mm -hmm. we, can, we can sort them out before before next month. 
Looked well monkey. popped through to me, so. So introduced, huh? All right. Seeing no further discussion, let me get a roll call vote. Scott? Yes. Nedro? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Dunk? Yes. Mallard? Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, intro those ordinances are introduced. Mr. President, I think this was a good um, example of a lot of cases coming to the ZBA and mm -hmm. the Planning Commission responding to mm -hmm. what was going on at the ZBA and coming up mm -hmm. with some good legislation to address that so that the ZBA is not so bombarded with the, the same the things that we should over things that should over. be in our ordinance. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I know we've, we've worked a lot on that the last few years. So. Right. Um, all right, it brings us to item C. Motion to adopt the proposed budget for fiscal year 2019. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion Malik, second Duff. Further discussion? Uh, I do want to comment on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I think this is a very good budget. Um, I think in the revised as it is now, we end up uh, spending down about 120000 of that fund balance the vast majority of which goes mm -hmm. into funding repair of our roads. And the reason for that is that the state government does not adequately fund roads. Our roads are better than actually most of our surrounding communities. But if you drive on the roads, if you are on the roads, you pay an added price every time you drive in the risk of repairs. The repair rate on average in Southeast Michigan is an extra $650,000, $650 per car for damage caused by poor roads. Um, it's really expensive. I am quite happy that we are working on the roads. Uh, I think that's what I have to say, so. Well, I'd like to thank our uh, treasurer for the work he put in to bring this to us in the manner that he did so it can be approved properly. All right, any further discussion? Let's get a roll call vote. Scott? Yes. Nedro? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Duff? Yes. 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 Motion carries. All right, brings us to item D, local road improvement program grant agreement for Benstein Pathway. Here is uh, actually some grant <coughs> from some planning and, uh, and a good application. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bird, would you care to? Uh, sure, we uh, announced this at the last meeting that we had applied for and received a grant to construct a pathway that will connect Claire Miller Park with the intersection at uh, Glengarry and Benstein. We have, uh, the chief I think will tell you we have a pretty unsafe situation right now with people go walking as if there's a pathway there now and there mm -hmm. isn't. So um, Engineer Powell and I will get together on uh, the details and when <coughs> this will work. The um, our, our local governing authority, you all, um, has to approve uh, us accepting this grant. Mm -hmm. And once it's approved, uh, we'll uh, sign a couple documents and we have until the end of next year uh, to complete the project. So uh, it's a good thing and we're happy about it and uh, we'd certainly like to be able to receive these funds. Yep, and uh, I think everybody knows this is a grant through uh, an Oakland County business development prospect and this goes uh, through what is about as close to a downtown as we have, which is between uh, <laughs> between Claire Miller and, and the Dairy Twist. And but it does dairy. actually bring pedestrian pathway through several businesses in that strip mall and up, mm -hmm. to, up to the Dairy Twist. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a good grant. It was a good application. Thank you to our engineer and our administrator for bringing it to our attention. Uh, and with that, do I hear a motion to accept the grant? Second. Motion Duff. Second Dumont. Further discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Scott? Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, recommendation from Engineer Powell, uh, E1. Tennis Court Parish. Thank you, Council. And I might add that uh, with your permission, I'm looking to um, uh, obtain bids for the Benstein Road Pathway with our 2018 19 road paving program. So we can bundle all that together and hopefully save some money by uh, increasing the size of the project. Uh, so thank you. Um, before you tonight is a request to uh, pay uh, McKearney Asphalt. Uh, if you recall, we had some very large uh, diagonal cracks, a uh, substantial number of them in the tennis court uh, due to the last winter. 
Um, they have been in, they've filled those cracks, they've repainted them. Uh, I did take pictures and uh, sent them off to the contractor because I was concerned if you've been out there to see the difference in color between the uh, paint they used this year and the paint that was on the uh, uh, tennis courts uh, that were done last year. And uh, he assured me that it's exactly the same pigment, pigment the same uh, paint that was done uh, that was used last year. It's just the sun has uh, oxidized last year's paint. So he expects here over this summer that those cracks will disappear and the, the uh, extra wide uh, uh, paint that they put on over the cracks will disappear this summer. So uh, with that, I, I'm asking for the council to authorize payment in an amount of $3,000 for the repair of the cracks that occurred in the uh, asphalt in the tennis courts. Do I hear a motion? So uh, motion Duff, second Scott. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Scott? Yes. Nedro? Yes. Duma? Yes. Duff? Yes. Mallet? Yes. Thank yes. Thank you, Council. All right. Item F, second call to the public. Uh, opportunity for citizens to, rest, re, to address the Council regarding any and all village business. I open the second call. Thank you, sir. Mike Dorsey, 2425 Brisbane. Um, I just have a quick question. The grant agreement for the Benstein pathway, mm -hmm. how far off the edge of the road will this pathway be placed? Do you, has that been determined yet? Uh, our engineer can answer that, I think. Yes, <laughs> I'll come up and share the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so keep in mind that this is a uh, road commission for Oakland County road right-of-way along Benstein Road. Uh, their policy is that a pathway must be at least 12 feet off of the traveled portion of the, uh, of the lane. So we're at least 12 feet back, and that's one of the complications uh, due to the widening of Benstein Road in and out along the edge there in the Excel D cells. We actually have to get into the property a little bit, so a number of the property owners are going to be granting easements for this pathway to keep it further off the roadway. Thank you. Right, second call. Yes, sir. John McDonald, 1155 Glengarry. There was a remark made earlier by Mr. Scott about looking at this plan that we have for this uh, uh, park as a, a business. This isn't a business, this is a community. And that's what we should look at it as, a community. It's not a business. We're not here to make money. We're here to live. Thank you. Mr. Reimick. Dave Renwick, 685 Amenia. This gentleman just made a point that I had hoped to make earlier and I forgot. And Mr. Scott's words were dead wrong. This is not a business. This is a government. Your budget is supposed to drain you down, not drain you down, but your budget is supposed to be spent and you're supposed to be left at the end of the year with no more than 25% in your general fund. That's common knowledge. Anybody can go online, look it up. The MML that you guys pay to be in every year even says this. You're not in this to make money and you've been making money hand over fist. I just listened to you speak for counsel about how you're going to put $150,000 into roads this year, is that correct? Is that the figure? I would have to go back and look at the detail on the budget for the number, the amount that's getting transferred to minor roads. I believe it's actually more than that. Oh, how much, how much do you believe it is? I didn't bring this year's budget and I'm sorry, I, I, I can go get it. I got it. Transfer to local road fund for the proposed year, $233,000. $233,000. And 
$233,050. dollars 233000 close enough. Okay, I'm looking at last year's unrestricted fund balance available for spending at the government's discretion, it says right in your own report, $2,602,000. So $233,000, that's spit in the wind. That's not even 10%. You're, you're bragging about what you're putting into the roads, and you haven't even put 10% into it. And you're pleading, oh, well, the state doesn't put money into roads. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. And you've got $2,600 in unrestricted funds available, and you're pretty much pleading, oh, my God, we're almost bankrupt. What the heck is going on here? You should have no more than $675,000 in that general fund at the close of the year if you're operating like a government and not a business. You guys are pretty much a money-making enterprise right now. And you just pretty much voted to keep on keeping on. And you just pretty much voted to blow another million dollars on a park system that doesn't need a million dollars blown on. It's, I like living in this village. I've lived here 34 years, and I like living in this village. But the councils in the last 10 years, I'm appalled at how you guys are pretty much taxing and spending. You're, you're aimlessly collecting money and then saying, oh, I'd like to do the park. Oh, we need a new weed harvester. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. Next time you need something big, figure out how much it's going to cost, put it out there, and then start taxing the people to pay for it and see how much money you get, rather than giving us a, a trash tax that pulls in, Jesus, $300,000 a year and then saying, oh, we haven't raised the millage rate in since 1996. Yeah, you have. You put in the trash tax. You're pulling in the Commerce Township money that should have gone back to the people if you guys had done it right. So, yeah, really, we have had an increase. It's just not in the millage rate. Everybody is paying more now than they would have if we just had a millage rate. So it's a sham. It's, it's, it's smoke and mirrors that we're only paying the millage rate we paid in 1996. That's bull. And sorry, when you guys are making that kind of money off a of fund balance, that's just embarrassing because you're a government and you should be going down to 25% every year, and that's it. And if you want something, you're supposed to ask for it. Not just do it because it's sitting there because you've been banking it. Thank you very much. Anybody else second call to the public? I'm McDonald, 1155 Glengarry. I understand what this man's saying, but I also see that with this surplus that you people have, in a way it does help us not to have tax increases or things like this. I think the main concern here is that that large amount of money that is sitting there at the discretion of the council. Sorry, but you know, most people are not trust. I mean, the bigger government gets, the more they waste, you know, in its, its nature, I guess, or whatever, law of the jungle. But uh, I, it, the surplus, I don't mind having it. I haven't seen where my taxes have gone up. But I, as long as it's not wasted, it's not a bad thing to have. From what I see. 
but you do got to realize that these people out here would like to know and like to see if it's being wasted and being asked about things. But two million dollars isn't bad pushing. Thank you. Anybody else second call? Everyone looks 685 and mean again. I'm not trying to belittle this gentleman. He's definitely entitled to that opinion. But a government, in order to be fiscally responsible, should not have more than 25% in their fund balance. That's <coughs> rule of thumb. Your own treasurer even said that last year. So, no, it's really not a good thing to have 2,600,000 when you should only have 675. It's not a good thing at all, and it does not show a fiscally responsible government sitting at this table. Thank you. Right. Anybody else second call? Seeing none, I will close the second call to the public. Yeah. Pick up my agenda. Okay. Brings us to recommendations from Police Chief Ellsworth. Um, request to send off Sergeant Morosco and Officer Crick to Alice. Alert, lockdown, inform, counter, evacuate training September 18th, 19th in Troy. And Thank you. Uh, this is a... Wow, is that loud? <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, a class that I wanted to uh, get our officers involved in um, for a while now, and has finally come into uh, our area. And Sergeant Morosco and Officer Crick uh, have agreed to attend this. It's a basically a train to trainer. These guys are going to be able to train uh, our local businesses, our village employees for the um, the alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. The things that we see on TV for active shooters, robberies, things of that nature. Um, I had a meeting today with the credit union, a very nice meeting, and uh, they are very interested in uh, being trained. And uh, so we're setting it up for the first part of October. So as soon as our guys get trained, we're going to start going right into the fields and training uh, their employees. So this is something that we've been waiting for, the opportunity to send our officers to, and this is. Uh, a good opportunity to start uh, training up our new officers. So with uh, Sergeant Morosco and uh, one of our new officers, Officer Crick, I think it's a, a good opportunity. Right. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved. Motion Duff, second Dumont, to send uh, off Sergeant Morosco and Officer Crick to Alice Training, $595 each. Further discussion? It's unfortunate that it's a sign of the times that this is really vital training, but this is really vital training. This is important <coughs> stuff, so I'm glad we're doing it. Uh, <coughs> any further discussion? I just no? want to make, make, make sure that the public knows that they are budgeted funds. Budgeted yes. funds. <laughs> From budgeted training <laughs> funds. Correct. Seeing no further discussion, roll call vote. Scott. Yes. Nedro? Yes. Duma? Yes. Duff? Yes. Malice? Yes. Mikey? Yes. All right, uh, item two, discussion. Golf cart resolution. Uh, this has been kind of kicking around at the admin committee for a while. Um, I think there's been sort of further input from the uh, chief and the attorney. And uh, Chief Ellsworth, what do you what do you got for us tonight? Uh, well, sir, in uh, 2014, our state uh, passed a. Uh, Public Act 491 to allow golf carts actually uh, on city or village of fewer than 30,000 people by resolution to allow operation of golf carts on the streets of that city or village. Um, we talked about this for quite some time before we even threw it to our attorneys. Um, there are several restrictions that go along with this and uh, it's going to be pretty lengthy to go through. Basically, they have to be, uh, the golf carts have to be, it's half hour before sunset, 
half hour before sunrise or half after sunrise they're not allowed anything after it's similar to a jet ski on regular lakes is you know, the half hour the sunset rule um, also they have to be licensed drivers so they have to be it can't be kids running around on golf carts in the neighborhoods um, they cannot be on certain roadways and we would restrict those roadways to uh, they cannot be on Ben Steen or Glengarry or South Commerce, Ladd Road, uh, and a portion of uh, Wolverine Drive, I believe, between Penny Lake and South Commerce, uh, to keep them in the subdivisions. What what we're adopting this for is to allow those folks that are uh, back lot owners to go to the lake, use that as uh, a way to get down to the beaches, their accesses. Uh, without having to pile into a car and then find a parking spot down there. This does not allow them to use our bike paths. This does not allow them uh, any access to sidewalks. This is specifically for roadways and to their accesses. It's not uh, going to be a free-for-all and this gives us a little teeth to be able to enforce. Um, I know several different communities I've checked into have done different things. Uh, register them. Uh, the problem with that is we would then have to come up with some sort of registration tag or identification. That costs money and we're not allowed, by this law, we're not allowed to collect any money for that. So we decided not to do that for the unlimited amount of golf carts that we have currently in the village, which I estimate to be right around 30. And I don't expect them to explode, giving us, giving this, uh, um, it's not, I don't think it's going to be uh, a huge demand. Um, but I think this kind of relieves uh, my officers from having to make that decision whether or not to impound these. We see them. We've seen them for years and years. Uh, it's a liability. If you want us to enforce that, I have no problem enforcing the current law. I'm just saying this is an opportunity for us to get ahead of the game to allow these. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of money on uh, their golf carts, using them to run back and forth to the lake uh, that don't live on the lake. So um, it, it's it's an option. As a resolution, we can adopt this, and it does then eliminate the liability. So I will ask uh, Jennifer Lowski, our attorney, to elaborate a little bit more on that. So um, you can adopt all of these regulations by resolution with the exception of your violations and penalties section has to come out. Um, because it needs to be adopted by ordinance mm -hmm. violations and penalties would have to, uh, to to turn something into a civil infraction you'd have to do by ordinance so the way that you'd still be able to enforce the, these rules and all of these standards would apply but the police department would just afford, enforce as if they would under the Michigan vehicle code violations any other vehicle code violation so, so, so just to make sure I'm understanding this Somebody violates it, however, we can still enforce under Michigan law. Right. We just don't have a separate local ordinance that enforces it. Right. And so if you want to decriminalize this and set it up as a civil infraction, then you would do that by ordinance. And, and we can do that eventually. I think the chief needed something in place for the summer season coming up and not having to go through the, the ordinance process, the time frame there. So it, it's perfectly acceptable to have this uh, by resolution if we remove the violations and penalties <coughs> section. And then in the parking regulations section where it says that they're adopted by reference, that they're, they're not adopt, the parking regulations aren't adopted by reference in the village, so we could just strike that language right, right there. The, the parking regulations and the standing regulations would still apply to all of these golf carts, but just to clarify, they're not, they're not adopted by reference. Okay, and, and just to clarify for, uh, or you know, kind of update council on where we've been in discussing this in the admin committee, we've had a lot of back and forth around particulars around that we could enforce or not enforce via local ordinance, um, you know, which specific streets, which specific roads. Uh, we can certainly bring it back and look at it and looking at doing an ordinance of some sort, but it's, it's, it, it is, like many of these things, turned out to be more complicated once you get into the details than we had expected. Um, I think what we, what we could use now, especially with summertime upon us, 
is something that gives our officers and our police department clear direction, uh, at least for this summer. Uh, we can certainly have council ask, ask admin to take another look at it in terms of, of putting together an actual ordinance. Um, but I think this would get us to a place where the chief can give his officers guidance, where we can accommodate, um, you know, action that we know is going on right now and that we know is fairly reasonable within the overall scheme of Michigan. Sure. And, and Could we adopt uh, this tonight the then? You can adopt the resolution. The resolution yeah. minus the infraction. Oh, right. With parking regulations and violations and penalties yeah. struck. So then you could look at <clears throat> adopting an ordinance over time that decriminalizes and allows for fines as opposed to what, what What I would like to do is if we could adopt this resolution we're going to work through these and see where the mm -hmm. finer points are, what we're going to be able to, what we're not going to be able to, what I think is a good idea uh, if we, for example, between, you know, are we going to allow them into the park? Uh, these are things we have to work out yet, but at the same time, right now, we have issues where folks writing them down Woodlawn down to Mallow Beach. They're part of the association. They can go down there. But they're taking, you know, mom and dad, and they have their baby. Now they got to pile everything in the car, go out, unlock the gate, go down, park, go back and lock the gate. It it is cumbersome. I get it, but at the same time, these are things. These are how they're being used right now. I would just as soon see us address this. This does not, and I want to repeat this. This does not include four wheelers or go karts or anything of that matter. It is specifically spelled out in here. It is used for golf carts only, golf carts that are designed specifically for the game of golf. They may be customized, however, it does not include the, the four-wheelers or the ATVs or the gators or things of that nature. You can't just slap an engine on four it wheels. It is specifically and no, golf carts. <laughs> And uh, this resolution spells that out, and I will make sure that everybody, once we get this, we will put something out, obviously, on our, on our uh, website, make sure people are aware of it. I've had many, many, many people come to us and say, well, why can't we just write our golf carts? Well, this allows mm -hmm. them to be able to do that. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution minus those said areas that our attorney so pointed out. I, I hear and do I hear a second? Second. Second Nedro. So I hear a motion from Duff, second Nedro, to adopt the resolution as presented with the removal of the sections on parking regulations and violations and penalties. Uh, further discussion? We will then further look into it as an ordinance? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's reasonable to, let's, let's do this. This gets us covered through the summertime. Okay. Afterwards, um, the chief is going to come I'll back. I'll be able to critique it. Some, yeah, get some input back. Absolutely. Where we've run into problems, but I think this this addresses the immediate need. And you know, as we go down this route a little further, we'll have a lot better a lot better grounds for making it. One of the problems we were, we had in those discussions was it was a fairly hypothetical discussion. Um, all right. Further discussion. We get a roll call vote. Yeah. Yes. 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 Alex? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Brings us to item I, set topics for June 27 work session. Um, I do not have any current topics for the June 27 work session. President, I'd like to make a motion that we forego the June 27 work session. Second that. Motion Duff, second Malik for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, pending business, we have none tonight. Update from the chief. Just real quick, regarding that Alice training with uh, Sergeant Morosco and Officer Crick, you know, like I said, I had a meeting today with uh, the Wall Lake Schools Federal Credit Union, and we went over several different policies and procedures, and they're very excited uh, about the fact that we actually are going to have uh, a couple of our officers that are trained to be able to do this. We're also working together to come up with a uh, type of a broad program where we can for our elderly and, and the, we have an awful lot of fraud going on phone fraud uh, identification fraud and we're trying to work something out to where uh, myself along with um, uh, 
the, the credit union, uh, the Secret Service, who is actually in the fraud unit, and the FBI are going to hold a seminar of sorts for our elderly and our vulnerable people here in the village uh, at the credit union. They have a really nice space up there available to us, and they offered it up to us, and we're going to take them up on that. Hopefully we'll have that sometime uh, later in the summer. But uh, they're really good partners uh, for us, and uh, I certainly appreciate them. Just a quick update. Um, our officers made two arrests uh, this week regarding an armed robbery that actually took place uh, involving some of our local youth. Um, they have both been arraigned. One of them uh, has made bond, and the other one is sitting in Oakland County Jail on a $200,000 bond. Um, these were kids doing stupid kid stuff. Uh, their adult stuff does not kid stuff. And unfortunately, weapons were involved. Um, and uh, they were both uh, quickly arrested. There's two more that uh, are yet to be identified, but we're working with uh, their attorneys trying to come up with some uh, reasonable um, way to uh, get the identification of the other two people that may be involved. Um, this was an isolated incident involving a group of young men who had just graduated and the community is not in any danger. It was a uh, stupid setup as it were. And uh, But uh, my officers did a fantastic job, a very quick uh, resolution to this <coughs> and uh, hopefully we'll go forward from there. Um, as you can see from the statistics that I've given you, it's uh, we're our runs are up. Our our activity is very uh, high, but our crime seems to be very low, which I attribute to the good hard work of officers. We've got a great crew, and I'm thrilled to death with them. So that's it. Thank you. Hopefully, a great tiki night coming up real soon. So mm -hmm. actually, I did have a question as I was looking at all those statistics, and, and what is going on on Tuesdays? For some reason. Tuesdays. You know, I was wondering if somebody was going to bring that up. Um, it is Hot it, Tuesday. It leads to madness. Yeah, no. yeah, I, I'm beginning to think. But if you look back, a couple of the last couple of months, um, full moons have been on Tuesdays. <laughs> so there you go. So it it, uh, it stirs up the uh, animal in all of us. I think it's actually you know it's really strange. You, you can't pick and choose. You know, you think Saturday night would be the highlight night, and they're fairly low. Uh, and uh, it's just amazing sometimes. And, but and it is usually fairly random, but that was that was just notable. There was this spike it, it was, on Tuesday. Yes, spike it on was. Tuesday. Yep. A lot of births too occur on Tuesday, according to OBGYN. Oh, also, full also, moons. <laughs> full moons. I mean, not on Tuesday. <laughs> also, um, also worth worth noting. I know because it was in the news, and a lot of people had asked about it. There was a hit and run in Wixom. Um, there was mm -hmm. a fairly large manhunt locally. And uh, the the person in that has been caught on uh, arrested. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Update from the treasurer. Probably nothing here, Mr. President. Thanks. All right. Update from the administrator. Uh, two things. Um, you all know there's an effort underway to raise funds for a veterans memorial uh, here in the village, and tomorrow night, Ben Steen Grill is hosting a fundraiser. Uh, they're going to uh, contribute a portion of. Uh, all their sales tomorrow, I think it's 4 to 10 p.m., I believe, uh, to that project. And so anybody looking for a dinner tomorrow night, that might be a nice place to stop by. Certainly appreciate their uh, partnering with uh, with the committee on this. And then the last thing I'll mention, we um, have Tiki Night on July 3rd, as we always do, but this year it's on a Tuesday, which is also our trash collection. Uh, uh, um, so that could just be a mess all the way around, given our trends lately. Expect no um, problems on Tuesdays. I was actually referencing trash pickup, though, also <laughs> on that day. And so we have been proactively working with GFL to put a plan in place to make that day uh, possible for trash collection. Because it's a holiday week, we can't just pick a different day. It's not going to work. Fortunately, we are before the holiday, and so it'll be their normal day. But we're going to uh, work on getting some, some communication out to our residents about uh, getting their trash out the evening before because GFL is going to start a little bit early that day. They're going to assign a, hopefully at least one extra truck, and they're going to uh, redo their routes a little bit to try to get in and out of the most heavily congested areas um, early in that day. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that that goes well, but we'll be uh, interacting with the public about that as well just to they make sure. They come down Laguna at 
five thirty like they usually do, it's not going to be good. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. The yeah. Issue. We that out yeah, we have uh, stressed the, <laughs> yeah. the potential problems here as best we can, and um, I, I think they're prepared, and we'll keep working with them the next couple of weeks. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council comments. We'll start down here this one. You know, uh, I don't know how many meetings I've been in, both uh, finance committee and et cetera. The, uh, the mystery of the budget and the uh, outstanding general funds balance and utilization, I think at our next administrative meeting, we ought to talk about the way to uh, bring together a summary statement, one page that might give this community a little bit of an idea of what the 40 pages of that budget look like. Uh, in terms of the ending impact on general funds. So if somebody has this question, they can see we work very hard to make sure we keep our balances under control, manageable, and uh, are in fact building reserves, but actually over the last four to five years, we're depleting our reserves in order to meet public needs. So and maybe we can add that to the administrative uh, meeting on uh, Friday. Do let me get just so we can actually refer to admin if we want. Do I hear that as a motion? That's a motion. I'll second. If we need a motion a to do from that. Duff. Yeah. Uh, further discussion. Um, yeah, I think more clarity around it is. There's simple it, ways to present. It's come up. There have been explanations statement. over the years, and they they fade into time. So um, I think that's a good idea. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We'll talk about it Friday at the admin. Okay. Very good. Uh, anything else? Nope. That's it. Just wish everybody a safe and happy third and happy fourth of July. Yeah, fourth of July. Okay. Right. Malik? Yeah, for all those people that are in the audience that are unhappy with us, let me remind you that in November there's an election. Feel free to put your name in the hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come on down. <laughs> uh, Mr. Duff. Have a safe and happy third and happy fourth of July. Monday night, 7 o'clock, park and rec <laughs> meeting, right here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to add to to safe and happy Tiki night. Um, I do want to agree with uh, what Mr. Malik and what Mr. Dumont said. Uh, democracy is participatory, and as a community is participatory, we hold open meetings on a variety of things. We have a variety of boards. Um, we try to get the best input we can and we ask people to, to step in. And uh, on that front, I have a little bit of, of news I want to share with folks because the filing deadline for council is coming up in August, and I want to give people a little uh, chance July. to think about it. July. I think July. it's late July. Late July. July 24th, yeah. I believe. Coming even sooner than I had thought. Yep. <laughs> um, and the reason I may not know the date is because I've thought about it, and I will not be running for re-election this year. So I wanted mm. to let people know, wanted to get that out there so people have a chance to think about it. We, when we had that council opening, we had several really good candidates that all indicated an in, in interest in running. Um, so I wanted I to invite people to run. I don't think that's fair to the rest of us, John. <laughs> Look at me laughing now. No, um, I don't find it humorous at all. So, <laughs> so I wanted to let people know about that. I've, I've thought about it. Um, 12 years has been a really good run. I'm extremely proud of the work um, I've done with this council and with past councils across the year as a president, uh, before that for a year as a member, and before that for five years as chair of the Water Management Board. Uh, I got on council not to be El Presidente for life, but because the village was in real trouble. We were down to a $400,000 fund balance, and we were overspending that by $250,000 a year, and we were headed towards insolvency or state takeover or what may have you. And for the first four years I was on this council, the questions were not, what should we put in the park or should we fix a road? The questions were, should we continue to be a village? Should we disincorporate? Can we have a police force? Can we have a DPW? Um, and there was a lot of discussion about budget tonight. I would remind everybody that we are running with less of a budget than we were when I came on this council. Um, we have, that fund balance was built on cost cutting. And I'm very proud of what we've done. I think this community has come through the financial downturn that we faced probably better than just about any other community in Michigan. Um, not that I did, or maybe I did a little bit, but it's really hard work by everybody in the village, uh, volunteers, staff, 
council people, boards and commissions, uh, a lot of work over that time. And I'm really happy with where we are. I think the village is in great shape right now. Uh, we have a great leadership team. Um, and so I think this is a good time for me to step aside. I think it's time to get some new energy and some new ideas up here. And I have enjoyed it greatly, but just wanted to let folks know. So, uh, uh, you, so long and moving? thanks for all the fish. Yeah. Are you I, moving? I am not, I am, I'm not moving. I will probably <laughs> next take a nice long nap. Um, I'm not going away. I will probably, uh, I'll be around. Um, I don't have any particular plans for what to do with the uh, few minutes a week that I spend on council business, but uh, I, I may be boating. I have yet to even even pick up my fishing license this, this year. So uh, I may spend some time out on a boat instead of discussing marine regulations. Um, anyways, so I wanted to let people know about know about that, and I wanted not to let that linger up till the last minute. I wanted to give people some some notice. I've, I've given a lot of thought, uh, and that's what I that's what I had to tell people. So, well, thank you for your service, John, and uh, uh, I've known you for a long time. Off, actually, most of those years. Yeah. So uh, we'll miss you. Well, he's here. I'm, I'm still not, here. I'm not going away. I'm not going away. I'm here in November. Right now. But but so. but uh, come November, somebody else gets a shot. No, I don't, I don't, I don't grab like the grab idea one. at all. You know, you can run and not take the presidency. <laughs> I uh, mean, you're a valuable part of the community. Mm -hmm. Whether a lot of these people want to hear this or not, I was on council with you in the past before I had gotten off, and I made my comments to you when I had gotten off. It was a pleasure working with you on this council, and I think you're a valuable asset. Reconsider maybe running but not taking the presidency. And I know that's a lot to ask from somebody sitting here because I'm not sure I'll be reelected if I run. That's if. Okay. But the community needs your service. So, uh, and, and I want I want I want to say this again. Not going away. No, no, I'm not dying. I always yeah. said you are. You'll be out on the lake fishing as well. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I will probably not show up every single meeting. <laughs> I had the same problem. Um, but uh, but there are there are some things I have put off for for quite a while in in other ways and and you know there's unfortunately only so much time in a day and a week and. Uh, and and I wanted to push to give us a five dollar raise. <laughs> I, let me tell you, let me tell you the, the, the work that everybody does. It, it's coming on the ballot. People will get a chance to to see if we restructure the pay. But but people put a lot of work in it, and I do think that there that some level of greater remuneration is deserved there. So. Um, it's okay. There's there's been change before. There'll be change again. Um, but I I wanted to let folks know about it. So. I didn't mean to badger you. It's just I appreciate what you have accomplished and done. So, thanks. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Salute. Motion Duff, second Nedro. Both of whom are tired of my long-winded soliloquy. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>